great chain of being. Linnaeus connected the world through teeth, beaks, and bills. This was the point where one thing entered another. Minerals the appetite, voice the open air. Ornament entered function. And so it was that the vernacular languages of Europe were insufficient, only Latin or Greek. Other tongues were dark and crowded. Chokeberry seeds must first pass through the intestines of black bears. In abundant seasons, a sow comes upon the patch on the open edge of a river bank. While chewing, something provokes her to turn suddenly upstream and brace herself against a rock. This small amount of anxiety stimulates enough acid in the stomach to break down the hard shell of the berry seeds. The mouth is the symbol for a corner. Phoenicians built the alphabet out of joints. Sounds whose shapes in the throat and lips were translated into sticks piled or bent on the page. Small fires grew. People stood at windows to watch, arms outstretched. For the Greeks, this was epsilon. For the Romans, the letter E. Cough, then glottal stop. Heartbeat, then I am. Marshland, then coal, then greenhouse. All bells are held at the top, just as all plants are tied to the sun. Just as language, despite its vacuums and cinder blocks, hangs above heads, rings in the ears. Sometimes in Canadian forests, small pale plants stick up in clusters from the ground with flowers that hang from their tops like bells. These are pine saps, ghost plants, or corpse flowers. No kingdom will accept them, neither plant nor fungus, because they are vascular organisms that do not need the sun. Plants with no chlorophyll, mushrooms with rudimentary leaves. Aboriginals pick eyebright for the eyes. European settlers convulsion weed for the nerves. Linnaeus read the atlas wrong and gave plants in the high Andes names derived from the arid New Mexican plains. Nature doesn't jump. Kingdoms are carefully spaced ladders against the sides of burning buildings. One rung at a time, women and children are the first to descend. If the final goal of creation is us, then why for the index of berries in a small pamphlet did Linnaeus write, too sour, black and unpleasant? Unlike most birds, swallows do not migrate during the winter months to warmer southern latitudes. Instead, they gather in the late fall at the margin of cold lakes and estuaries. Here, they plunge themselves over the edge of the ice and pile on the bottom like hibernating frogs. If you come upon a lake full of swallows and break the ice in the parts that are darkest, the birds will appear in their masses, cold, asleep, and half-dead. If you fish one out and warm it with your hands, it flies away too soon, every hole beneath it mistaken for an opening. Homo sapiens was a draft, so was Homo diurnus. Both were crossed out and reinserted. Well before Darwin, Linnaeus put us in with apes. The only difference he could see was in the canine teeth. Whatever is, is right. This is not an order, but a riddle. Not a single thought, but many. Contributions to Geometry, Lichen Because there is no such thing as a single beginning. Before crowberry and fireweed, among ruined boulders that the ice let go, this slow committee... Even now in the city, on the bark of big-boned ash, small coastlines of lichen are the end of the Wisconsin. Fresh meltwater pooling, fingerprints plodding new hands. Here, in the bullish confidence of bark, evidence that even trees wear the beginnings of later trees. Think of yourself as an agreement, arms and legs in step, each cell holding up the walls of another, your language is a minority government where backbenchers rise suddenly, threaten to cross the floor, and what comes from your mouth is a difficult vote. There are two sides to every story, north that must think south. Somewhere in your gut, other lives remind you, with fever, stiff joints, with dream. A Chemical History the eel is dedicated to direction, a body hastily drawn, an emphatic map where details are assumed. Effortlessly it avoids any hands, any legs, any evidence of beginning. Here is what we know. 
Eels are born in the ocean at certain times of the moon on the tops of undersea mountains. Following the schematics for salmon, they migrate into fresh water, up rivers plugged with dams, into the begged questions of highland watersheds, the mud-filled seasonal pools. After years, after enough time for people to believe new sandbars have emerged at night in the silted streams, they come back down to the ocean, their bodies loose socks, filled entirely with sex, with current, no need for muscle or bone. Not even the ancients, their hands thick with beginnings, could ever find any eggs. Eels came from bits of skin, they thought, horsehairs accidentally dropped in water, vegetables rotted right through. Aristotle said they came from mud, from poorly drained ground. To catch an eel, you must put aside everything you know about fishing, even the water. On a cool, rainy night, an eel lives on land long enough to slip between stream beds and lakes, between the black pools of the ditch. For anyone who lives near a river, an eel has been in your basement. Their tubular bodies are a rolled message from the beginning. No one remembers being born. When you walk at length in the rain, it's easy not to notice the mud that flicks at the backs of your legs. The good. The good itself could be a mushroom, may wear a crown after all, require a certain humidity. Logs, tree stumps, bathroom tiles, those cumulus brains in the late afternoon over hot prairie towns. No one can explain the sickles of dead grass in the yard when mushrooms leave, a revolution without hammers. No one can say what goes wrong when, half-hearted, attention divided, we can't bring ourselves to finish our holy designs. The greatest moral works are mushrooms. They reveal themselves as this. Take the Bible, take the Geneva Convention, look at the curves of dead ground, take the Communist Manifesto, it needs very little light. For some time, we expected the end of the world to be a mushroom, a vengeful good, a good of fire, clouded thought. But every spring, they come out of the ground like universal suffrage, a writ of habeas corpus, speech before writing. They say dirt. They say get up. Eclipse. Anecdote is the lowest form of evidence that medicine will consider. But stories grow out of the sick, narratives hatched from the generative eggs of endings. There is a psychological condition where people cannot be kept from looking at the sun. Night is suffocation by the planet's weight and width. We are more like plants than we care to admit. Rain is exchanged in our hair as it is in the pine and broadleaf crowns. We hunch down. The business of water takes us into our bodies. Old messages stem in the spine. A plant, a person, is the small story of a place, an anecdote of acid or lime. Larger conversations of boreal and palm contain such dialects of shadow, rock face blocking the sun. Solar complex, solar plexus, Freudian slip. What is wrong with us gives itself away in broad daylight, in the very words that grow from hands to mouths, as in Latin, disaster, the unfavorable aspect of a star, a great or sudden misfortune. Density. All things desire to be as close as possible, so planets form as spheres, so the lost walk in circles. Smoke leaves a fire clinging to the faces of those who stand over it, curling in the anxious arcs of changing state. The table is set in the capital. The czar sits to a meal of round beets, globes of bread, and the circular livers of ducks. Let us eat, he says, but cannot. His stomach turns. So hell has circles, Dante tells us, so the damned may still cling, so they may eat. A stone dropped in a still pool makes concentric rings. Gravity is not inert. It is not without need or caprice or folly. At all costs, things lie down. They wish to touch. The water marks this wish with waves, diminution. So the sound of footsteps comes from everywhere. So a pulse has the acoustics of dream when it is dark, when you're making for home. 
Wolves encircle deer. Deer contain wolves. They are chemistries of undergrowth. Winter die back and winter in the hips and legs and winter breaking into the cedars, making the boughs taste resinous, making the deer taste like paved roads, like coins, and everything is crowded together. How quickly what is becomes dance, becomes feast. So the sun makes a wheel in the sky. So clocks take the form of wide eyes, open mouths. History repeats itself. Great loops in the goings and comings and the heart attacks and treaties. The agricultures that start again in the dim mornings where hedgerows suddenly have the look of long graves. The hands on the clock go around. The hands return easily to the mouth without thinking. This is how we contain ourselves. Sadness is a cold front in the lungs. The air contracts. Snow clouds line the soft pink coasts. Ecstasy is a thermal vent. Breath escapes through your palms. Newly vertebrate islands stand out of the ocean. Teeth glint through spreading fingers. So it is written from dust to dust. So there lies between summer's open windowed wit and winter's mineral pensiveness the autism of spring and fall. The equinox where, for a moment, with expressionless face, things could go either way. Cars spin out in the rain and the snow do donuts. Accidents happen on the drive back home. So when the rain has passed, there are always three rainbows. The first two are easy enough to see, spooning each other like sediment, a record of the changing light, the wavelengths that passed on, collected in the air like primeval forests, bodies. The third rainbow is always behind you, circling the sun. There the archive is kept, where the visible has its own halo. So the stations of the cross go around, repeat. So water will cross over itself, Oxbows, the Mississippi, the Saskatchewan, Mackenzie River Delta. So the phases of the moon are lessons in composition. What she meant to him, falling asleep in the car as he drove back from the city, the deer that stood in the dark at the side of the road, how he stopped to watch them gather in the field, and she surprised him with touch, and the moon that lit her face, a daylight of rooftops and speechlessness. So strength returns with rest, every task a departure. What is it within us that we learn so well in the caves? What reflex climbs out of our hunger, wraps around that place in the brain where language assembles, where it rises out of the rocks, a passion, a staff? What we learned from the boulder. So prayer makes us thicker, brings this world to the next. So food makes us thicker, brings this world to the next day. Intestines are a ministry, wells dug in the tablelands. Food augurs through coils of dry need. So a sphere is the largest volume with the least surface area, the smallest commitment to the outside. Hedging has form. I love you. But as a planet, like the farthest ones of spun gas, in case you get too close, in case you open the careful tectonics of my bare arms. So electrons go around the outside. Two trailer park girls go round the outside. So I love you, I love you, a stutter is desire bald in the mouth, pure roundness, language of the infinite O. So even light curves in on itself, catches in the throat. So it drags its waves great distances, taking thirty years to leave the star Arcturus and arrive in a pair of binoculars in a clearing of barren rock and spruce on a night in August where you are with your family who have lived away from you for years, who have grown older, have gathered their lives about them in woolen blankets, in windrows of touch, and there above you all, like a photo album, the house being built, a song from the seventies, is all the time that has gone before. Arcturus gives light from the year you were born. So a wave is a circle proposed and withdrawn, proposed and withdrawn. The ocean touches the coast with stutter. The sun reaches a period of indecision each night, drinks, smokes, whatever it is the circular do to continue. Starlight touches your family. The great lakes curve around you like sleeping, slow-breathing dogs. Starlight is the outside of a tree, the oldest part that cracks, that can't contain water. The image that slowly arrives, milk that comes up from the ground in a faint chain of globes. So the brain was once a stem before we crowded it with wonder. A single stem before joblessness, child poverty indexes, downtown redevelopment projects, arterial service lanes, lobes of laissez-faire. Tell me, what do you do? The hippocampus says rise, eat, have sex, stand in a high place, lie down under cover and sleep. It says, I do. There is no outside, no delegated tasks, no facility for the genius salesman. So the brain has spheres, 
so the mind wanders from room to room, trying to feel at home, rearranging the furniture, tilting the pictures to various angles of down. If you're crossing the equator in a boat and you flush the toilet, which way does the water circle? How much of descent has to do with attention? We go down without looking, our boots take in water thoughtlessly. The moon on the river is small scoops. Fish curve in their muscular tattoos returning at night to the bugle of eddies. So we eat. The outside comes in. So chromosomes coil, making each of us a fist. Cupped hands holding some smaller, older stone that has been passed down like spring seeding, a family blanket, patched and restitched, a telephone game where the message becomes confused. So I have always loved you. I said I loved you. So...